are the defenses to a breach of contract action. My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a business law and estate planning attorney with offices in Minnesota and New York. Today, we're going to talk about what happens when you or your business have been sued for breach of contract. What can be the defenses to that action? Now, of course, nobody wants to be in a lawsuit. Nobody wants to be sued, especially for a breach of contract. Usually you went into the contract, everyone signed the paperwork, and you were excited about the future. You had a goal, you were buying something, or you were selling something, and never in your wildest dreams did you think that you were going to end up in a breach of contract lawsuit. But unfortunately, it's a very common occurrence, especially for business owners, that at some point, working with all these contracts, you're going to end up in some kind of a dispute usually some kind of a lawsuit. And one of the reasons will be what's called a breach of contract. Now, this isn't something that you just want to take lightly. If you've received that summons and that complaint and your company is being sued or you're being sued individually for the breach of a contract, you want to make sure you're working with the right professionals. Speak to an attorney. Make sure you understand what you're facing. So even if you just buy an hour of their time, sit down with them, show them the pleadings, show them the contract, and make sure you have a good idea of what you're looking at. Now, of course, one thing you need to remember is if it's your business being sued, you can't just show up in the courtroom and say, Your Honor, I'm here, I represent my company, I'm gonna take care of this lawsuit. Business has to be represented by an attorney, and you can find a lot of different ways where this can go wrong if you look on the internet. There's lots of reported cases out there where companies just thought they could send the president in and work out some kind of an agreement, and the court will tell you no, unless there are very limited circumstances, the business has to have their own attorney. So if you've been sued and you're ready to meet with an attorney, you probably want to know what are going to be your defenses to a breach of contract action. Now, each case is going to be different, and we're going to need to look at the documents, both the summons and complaint and the contract that's being sued upon, to figure out what can be the best defense for you. However, when my clients receive a breach of contract lawsuit, I have a set of defenses that I always like to go through with them. They tend to be the most common ones that I see. The first is going to be fraud. So they may be claim that you fraudulently had them enter into that contract. You were concealing some facts, and if it wasn't for that, they never would have signed the contract. Another defense can be duress. So if they felt they had no other option but to sign the contract, they needed those widgets by tomorrow, they had to sign your contract, they were pressured into signing the contract, that can be a defense. Now, if the pressure is something as far as a physical threat, you may even have a criminal issue to deal with. The next defense you may have is an incapacity defense, meaning that one of the parties wasn't even able to understand the contract. Maybe there's some kind of a mental issue on one side, or more commonly, what if you're trying to sign a contract with someone who's under the age of 18? Under the law, they're considered to be incapacitated and cannot sign a contract in their own name. There's also a defense of illegality. So if the contract was for something illegal, the court may say, you know what, we're not going to enforce this contract. You can't have a legal contract and have an illegal contract be enforced. Another defense can be impossibility. If you signed a contract that's impossible, impossible to perform or impossible to pay, impossible to have the contract actually occur, that may be a defense to a breach of contract action. If there was a mistake, and this can happen when you have two parties to a contract and nobody brought in any lawyers, and you created a contract that you thought said A, but in fact it really said B. In those cases, you may have a defense of mistake to the breach of contract, and the contract may not end up being enforced. You can also have impossibility. So let's say it's impossible to perform that your obligations. That can be one another reason why your contract is unenforceable. There's a legal terminology called latches, which is people. It's, and this is a term that people are always confused about if you're not attorneys. And this occurs when one party waits too long to bring the lawsuit. And by waiting so long, they've essentially harmed the other party's ability to defend against the lawsuit. This also goes into a statute of limitations issue. So if you've waited too long to actually file it, under most states, it's like six years, some are three, some are four, there can be different kinds of statute of limitations if there are different types of contracts. So you wanna look at things like latches and statute of limitations to determine whether or not your contract lawsuit was brought too late. 
there's undue influence, which, and this is just like duress, there's some kind of influence put on one of the parties to sign the contract, and thus it may not have been a proper contract. They may have been influenced and were not really in the right frame of mind to sign that contract. There's what's called a lack of consideration. Now, this is another legal term that a lot of people don't run into, but it essentially says that one of the elements of the contract has to be an exchange of money or a promise. That's called consideration. If there's no exchange of money and there's no promise under the contract, then you may not have a legally formed contract. There's also a defense of unconscionability. If it would be totally unconscionable for one party to have to perform under the contract and the other party's going to totally make out under this contract, then you may have that defense. And finally, we're going to look at the statute of frauds. This is a legal defense that is in limited situations. So this is a defense that says that certain contracts have to be in writing. If it's going to take more than one year to perform it, it can't be in it can't be an oral contract. It has to be in writing. That's why if you're buying any kind of real estate, you'll often see that it has to be in writing and you have your long real estate contracts. You can't just have an oral contract saying, I'm going to sell my neighbor 10 acres off the back of my farm. That has to be in writing under this particular type of legal doctrine, which is called the statute of frauds. Now, I've thrown a lot of different defenses at you in this, in this video. Um, these are not something you want to try to do on your own, you, but it's a good place for you to start. You can look at all these different possible defenses and see what may apply to your contract situation. Now, as I said before, you can try to do this yourself, but if you're a business, you're going to have to hire an attorney. And so as an attorney, I'm of course going to recommend to you that you hire an attorney to go through the breach of contract lawsuit, look at the contract, and determine what are the best options for you. If you don't have an attorney or if you'd like to have a legal strategy session to speak to me about what are the best options, you can go to my website, andrewmayers.com, and there's a red legal strategy session button on that main site. Click that button and you'll be taken to my calendar. We can set up a legal strategy session to review your breach of contract lawsuit and the underlying contract to determine what are the best options for you and your business.